Challenging the massive diamond mining industry, an upstart company is creating synthetic stones that look, feel, and sparkle just like a girl's best friend. In a clean room where everything is carefully controlled, giant cookers are at work. A team of technicians watch to make sure today's production run is on track. The more you can control, the better results you get in the, in the final product. If everything works just right, it will earn this upstart company millions of dollars and wrestle power and control away from one of the richest industries on the planet. Imagination allows you to grow as big as you want. If you're a diamond miner, searching for diamonds is no longer your biggest worry. This is chemically, optically, physically, our diamond is a diamond. But this diamond had nothing to do with Mother Nature. It came from a machine. Gemesis diamonds couldn't be further away from the diamond fields of South Africa or the Arctic. Just south of Tampa Bay, Florida, the company's on track to produce more diamonds than just about any mine in the world. And the supply here is unlimited. We call our machines, if you will, diamond cultivators. Gemesis brought the technology over from Russia in the days after the Soviet Union collapsed. It's actually based on um, the Cold War. Um, diamond uh, is the best uh, substrate for electronics, and it's also impervious to nuclear attack. But the Cold War ended before the machines could be perfected. Now they're engaged in a new war for the ring fingers of global consumers. To make a diamond deep underground, you need carbon and enormous amounts of heat and pressure. The diamond cultivators are designed to replicate those conditions. Looks like a little earth in there, eh? The process starts with a cylinder made of metal and flecks of graphite carbon. At the base of each cylinder is a tiny diamond seed. When I talk about a diamond seed, I'm really talking about a small piece of diamond. And in here it looks like glitter, but it's actually small diamonds. The cylinder is placed at the center of the diamond cultivator. But that's where all your pressure is, is amplified to the maximum rating, which is 850,000 pounds per square inch. And we're running at about uh, 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. As the core heats up, the metal will turn molten and the graphite carbon is freed up. The diamond seed at the bottom begins to attract carbon atoms and begins to grow itself into a larger diamond. So we take that carbon that is dissolved and diffused through our growing environment and we create those conditions of temperature and pressure that allows the atom by atom formation just like in nature of a diamond crystal. The process will go on for four days. In the end, it will produce a three carat diamond. Every day is like Christmas. We get a new diamond or a few new diamonds every day that we were able to handcraft and grow and that's, that's pretty amazing. But before they can see their diamond, the machine needs to be opened up. What you're looking at is the core broken open and the critical component is really this re-solidified material here which has the bottom of the diamond seed crystal, the seed being here, here is the crystal, and it's grown up within this solidified material. So what we're going to do now is put this metal-based material with a diamond embedded into it into a weak acid. We'll dissolve the outer material that has re-solidified after the process, and we'll be left with a rough crystal. Each diamond is slightly different. The process is still unpredictable. We don't grow to diamonds the same. So when we grow a diamond crystal like this, everyone is unique and individual just like in the earth. So each one will have some level of imperfection just like an earth mine diamond. The final product will be cleaned, inspected, and sorted as a rough diamond. We've taken away a lot of the challenge of finding the diamond, but not the challenge of actually growing the diamond. Gemesis grows mostly colored diamonds, the most sought after and valuable. Ironically, yellow diamonds are actually easier and cheaper to grow with this method than white diamonds. Our yellow diamond is yellow for the exact same reason it was yellow in the earth. We introduce nitrogen into the growing environment that mimics what is occurring down in the earth, 
And because that nitrogen is present, we get a yellow diamond. For now, yellow diamonds are the Gemesis signature. The company does have big plans to expand, more machines, more colors, and more beating Mother Nature at her own game.